Okay, so here I have a door, and I like to make it so that whenever the player walks into the door, the door opens. Also, to make things a bit harder, I would also like to make it so that whenever the player walks into the door, we see it open for them as well. So, here's how I go about doing so. Now, to start off with, we're first going to make it open for the local player. But before we do that, we first need to create some animations of the door being open and closed. So first, we need to bring up the animation tab. I'm just going to come up to the top of my Unity window and go Window Animation Animation, or Control 6 for the shortcut. And I'm going to drag and drop this window down to my project window. Then I'm going to select the parent object of my doors. I'm going to come down to the animation tab and hit create. Now we need a name for this animation and I'm going to call this door open. With the animation made, we'll also see it create an anime tour on our parent game object. Anyways, now I'm going to hit the record button on my animation tab, select one of my doors and move it while holding control to snap its location. And then I'm going to do the same for the other door. Coming down to the animation tab, I'm going to move the header one frame forward I'm going to grab these two nodes and go Control c Control v to create an animation of one step. As far as I'm aware, if you don't do this, it will, by default, create an animation of one second long instead of just being one frame. So, with our first animation done, we now need to create our closed animation. So, I'm going to hit this drop down menu and hit Create New Animation, and I'm going to call this new one Door Close. Hitting the record button again for this animation, I'm just going to give each door a little wiggle while holding Control to record where the door is by default. Then, coming to its nodes again, I'm going to hit Control c Control v again, and now we have our animations of the door being opened and closed. I just want to stop recording. I'm going to come back to the project window. I'm going to select the animations that we've created one by one, and come up here and disable loop time so the animations don't loop. Now that we have our animations sorted, we need to say when we want them to play. So, we just want to come to our parent game object and double click the animator to open it. Now that we're in the animator, we can see our two animations. Before we change anything, however, we first want to come up to our parameters tab and hit this plus button and we want to create a ball. I'm going to call this ball is open. Then I'm going to come into our graph and as we want the door to be closed by default, I'm going to come up to my door closed animation and I'm going to right click and select set layer as default state. I'm then going to right click the animation and select make transition and I'm going to make a transition from door closed to door open and then do the same the other way. Then I'm going to select one of my transitions, and in the inspector, we want to change a couple of settings. So I want to hit the drop down menu, and in the settings tab, we first want to disable has exit time, because we don't want any delay before the animation is played. Next is the transition duration, and because our animations are just the door being fully open or fully closed, we want to use the transition smoothening in order to smoothly open and close the door. The value shown here will say how long the door will take to open, and in my case, the default value of 0.25 looks good but feel free to change this value to change the speed of the door. Then for interruption source, we want to select next state, and this will just mean that the animation can be interrupted so the door doesn't have to fully open before it can close again. Now we can say when we want this transition to play, so I'm just going to come down to conditions and hit this little plus button to create a condition. Now the default values are actually what we want here, but to explain, we want it so that whenever the parameter is open equals true, we want it to play this transition, transitioning from door close to door open. Cool, so now I just want to select my other transitions and give it the same settings, but for its condition I want to set it so it only transitions when is open equals false. So now in summary, when the game begins, it will play the animation door closed. When it sees is open ball equal true, it will transition from door closed to door open, and when the ball equals false again, it will transition from door open to door closed. So now our animator should be fully set up, we just want to test it in game before we do any udon logic. So now I'm just going to drag and drop my anime tool window down to this little corner here and then hit play. Now that we are playing, I just want to close the menu, hold down tab and come down to our anime tool window and toggle the is open ball on. We can now see that when we toggle the is open ball on, we'll see the door open. And when we click it again, we'll see the door close. Sweet! So now we have our anime tool set up and working, it's time to create our udon logic. I'm just going to stop playtesting. And now we need to create a trigger zone to detect when a player walks near the door so we can tell it to open. Now in my case, I just have a void outside my hallway, so I'm just going to use a sphere collider that clips past the sides of my hallway. Feel free to use a different collider to better suit your use case. Now I'm just going to select my parent game object in the hierarchy. I'm going to right click, 3D object, sphere. I'm going to move it down a bit and then scale it up to cover the entire door space and then some extra. I then want to delete its mesh renderer and mesh filter as we won't be needing to make this trigger visible to the player. And then I want to come over to my collider and select is trigger and make it true. 
Now, before we go any further, I'm just going to rename this sphere to door trigger. And last but not least, I'm going to come down and hit this add component button and create an Unum behavior component. Now, we just need a script to go inside this Unum behavior component. So I'm going to come over to my project window. I'm going to right click create via chat Udon Udon graph program asset. And I'm going to call my script door trigger logic. Now, I just want to reselect my trigger and drag and drop our new Udon script into this Udon behavior component. And then I want to open up the Udon graph. Okay, so now that we're in the graph, it's time to create our logic. Now, the thing we want the script to do is we want to tell our animator to change the ball is open whenever the player walks into the trigger. So the script needs to know what animator contains the ball. To do that, we need to come up to the variables tab and we want to hit this plus button to create a variable and I'm going to create a animator variable. I'm going to call this anim for short and then I'm going to hit this drop down menu and make it public so we're able to select it inside the inspector. Then I just want to drag and drop the variable into our graph and I'm going to put it into an animator set ball node. I'm going to change the node from int to string. I'm going to plug our animator into the instance slot. And then we need to give it the name of the ball that we want it to change. So I'm just going to copy and paste the name from my animator window into the string slot. And lastly, we need to make the ball equal true. So I'm just going to tick this checkbox. So now whenever this node is called, it will tell the animator to find the parameter is open and make it true. Now we just need to say when we want this node to be played. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create an event on trigger enter node. Now this event will be called whenever any player walked into the trigger. So as we're first going to make the door only open for the local player, we need to check if it was the local player that walked into the trigger and not another player. To do so, I'm going to grab this player API and I'm going to put it into a player API is local node. And then we need to create a branch node by holding down B and right clicking and then link it all up. Now, if we grab the true arrow and plug that into our animator set ball node, now whenever a player walks into the trigger, it will check to see whether or not that player is the local player. And if it is the local player, it will play the animator set ball node, making our is open ball equal true. Now, we just want to do the same for the event on player trigger exit, but we want to untick the value on our animator set ball node to make the ball equal false instead. Awesome, so that's all the logic that we need for now. I'm just going to hit compile and come back into our scene view. Then coming back to our Udon behavior component, we need to tell it our animator. So I'm just going to drag and drop my parent game object that contains the animator into the slot. And now it's time to play test. So I'm just going to hit play. And now that we're in the world, we can see that whenever the player walks into the door, the door opens. And when we walk out of the trigger, the door closes. We can also spam this and we can see that it behaves totally fine. Awesome. Okay, so this logic works perfectly fine. But what if we wanted the door to open for all players and not just the local player? Well, that's where our code gets a little bit more complicated in order to deal with some edge cases. So first of all, we just want to come back into our graph. And the first and obvious change that we want to do is we just want to get rid of this player API is local check and plug our on player trigger enter node directly into our animator set ball node. So now whenever any player walks into the trigger, it will open the door. And when any player walks out of the trigger, it will close the door. However, while this would work if there was only ever one player in the door at any given time, the script really falls apart when there are multiple players. If I was to play this with multiple players, we can see that when one player walks into the trigger, it opens the door for both players. If they exit the door, it will close. However, if a second player walks into the trigger, we can see that it also looks fine, but when one of those players walks out of the trigger, we see the door closes, despite one player still being in the trigger. This is because we're not checking how many players are inside the trigger, so when one player leaves, it plays the event on player trigger exit, closing the door for both players. The solution to this is to count how many players are still inside the trigger and only if there are no players inside the trigger will we close the door. To do this, we'll need to create an int variable to keep track of how many players are inside the trigger. I'm going to come up to our variables tab and hit this plus button and create an int variable. I'm just going to call this counter. We don't need to make this public or anything, so we can just grab our counter variable and plug it into an int addition node. We're going to tell it to add one to our counter variable and we want to set this as our new counter value. So we're just going to drag and drop our variable while holding control to get a node that will set it. And then we can plug our new value into our set counter node. So now linking up all the arrows, whenever a player walks into the trigger, it will add one to our counter. Now we want to do the same for the exit node, but get it to subtract one from our counter. We can just copy and paste it down here. In this case, I'm just going to add negative one to it instead of creating an int subtraction node, but feel free to create that node if you feel like it. Now, something we need to add to our on tricky exit event is that we need to check to see whether or not the counter equals zero. If the counter equals zero, we'll know that there's no longer any plays inside the trigger and we can safely play the animator set ball node to turn off the ball and close the door. So I just want to create another branch node while holding B and left clicking 
And as this branch node requires a bool value to work, I'm going to create an int greater than node and plug that in. This node will be used to check if my int is greater than zero, so I'm going to plug my counter value into the top slot. If it is not greater than zero, then we want to close our door. So I'm going to take the arrow from the false and plug that into my animator set bool node. If the value is greater than zero, we don't want it to do anything, so we can just leave the true arrow blank. And so now, whenever the player walks into the trigger, it will add one to our counter variable before telling the door to open. If a second player walks into the trigger, it will add one to the value, and it will update the bool value a second time, but that doesn't matter. Then, when a player leaves the trigger, it will minus one from our counter int, and then check if their counter is less than zero. If it is, and only if it is, will it then play the set bool node and close the door. Awesome! So now, if I was to play test this, we can see that when one player walks into the trigger, it opens the door, and when a second player walks into the trigger, the door stays open. When one of those players walks out of the trigger, the door stays open, and only if the other player walks out does the door then close. Awesome! However, while this works for most cases, there is still another problem. If a player was to walk into the trigger and then leave the game while inside the trigger, we can see that the door remains open despite the player no longer being in the trigger. Also, if the remaining player was to walk in and out of the trigger, it does not fix itself. This is because when the player disconnected from VRChat, they never played the event on player trigger exit, and so the counter had one added to it, but never subtracted from it. Now, this also used to happen when a player respawned, but my more recent testing shows that this no longer seems to be a problem. Either way, this isn't ideal, so how can we make it so whenever a player leaves the game, it doesn't leave the door open? Well, to do so, we need you to see how many players are inside the trigger when a player leaves the game. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated, but stick with me here. Now, I just want to simplify some of our code to make things a little easier later on. I just want to take this part of the graph where we toggle on and off the ball and make that into a custom event. So I'm just going to come over here and create an event custom node, and I'm going to call this check door status. And then I just want to grab my animator set ball node and plug that in. Then for its value, I'm simply going to grab our int greater than node and our counter variable and plug that directly in. So now whenever this event is called, it will tell our animator to be true if the counter is greater than zero and false if the counter is less. So now I can just delete that part from the two events and replace them with an Unum behavior send custom event node. And we just want to hit the drop down menu and tell it to play the event check door status. Okay, so now that we've done a little bit of cleanup, it's now time to create a bit of logic to check to see whether or not a player is still inside the trigger. We want this event to play whenever a player leaves the game, so we're just going to create an event on player left node. Whenever this event is called, I want it to reset our counter value, so I'm just going to grab our set counter variable and create an int constant node, set it to zero, and plug that into our set counter variable. So now whenever this node is played, it will set our int to be zero. Now that the int is zero, the way I'm going to recalibrate this counter is I'm going to disable the collider on this object, wait one physics frame, and then re-enable the collider. Then if there are any players still inside the trigger, it will play the event on player trigger enter and keep the door open. Now something to be aware of, for those of you trying to adapt this script, is that using the event on player trigger enter works differently from the non VRChat event on trigger enter. With the unity on trigger enter, the event won't be called if the collider is re-enabled while the object is inside of it. It will only be called when the object enters the collider, not if it's suddenly inside of it. To do that, you would need to use a much more expensive event on trigger stay with a great deal of caution. However, today we're using the VRChat event on player trigger enter, and that does get called if the player is found to be suddenly inside the trigger. This threw me off at first, so I thought I'd better clarify here. Okay, so now we need to turn off the collider that's on this object. To do this, we want to use a collider set enable node, and we're going to set our collider to be false. However, we need to say what collider we want to turn off, and instead of creating a variable up here to get the collider, I'm instead going to use a game object get component node. I'm going to change it from string to type, and then I'm going to create a type collider node and plug that in, and then grab the resulting component and plug that into a collider set enable node. So now, whenever this node is called, it will come down here and grab this game object, and it'll look to see if it can find a collider component on it, and then disable it. So now that we've turned off our collider, we need to wait a physics frame before we re-enable it. Now, the easiest way of doing a delay in Udon is to use a delayed custom event, so I'm just going to use the node Udon behavior send custom event delayed by seconds. This node will wait a couple of seconds before telling a custom event to play. Now, you may be wondering why I didn't use an Udon behavior send custom event delayed frames node, but that is because that node can only delay the event by either update or late update. We want to wait for a single physics frame to happen, so we want to use fixed update, but that just isn't an option. 
Luckily for us, however, it isn't a problem to wait a couple more frames, so we can just use a send custom event delayed seconds node, and I'm going to delay it by 0.1 seconds. That is ample enough time for a physics frame to happen, but it's fast enough that the player will never know that the door wasn't doing anything during that time. Now we need to create an event for this node to call. I'm going to create another event custom node, and I'm going to call this re-enable collider. I'm going to grab our logic to turn off the collider, and copy that for this event, but instead get it to turn on our collider. Then I want to come back to our Udon behavior send custom event delayed seconds node and get it to play the event re-enable collider that we just made. So now whenever a player leaves, it will set our counter to zero before disabling our collider. After 0.1 seconds, it will re-enable that collider and if there's still anyone inside that trigger, it will get it to play the event on player trigger enter and it will get that to do it once for every player that is still inside the door. When that happens, they will play the event check door status, telling the door to stay open. However, if there is no one inside the door, which honestly is highly likely, it won't actually close the door, as while well we're setting our counter to zero, we're never actually telling it to play the event check door status. So I'm going to create another Udon behavior send custom event delayed seconds node, and I'm going to get it to call the event check door status after 0.1 seconds. This will mean that if there is only one person in the door, and they were the ones to leave, it would close the door. So that should be all we need for our script. We just want to come up here and hit compile and then we can build and test with two players to test out the networking. So now that we're in the world, we can see that when one player walks into the trigger, it opens the door. And when a second player walks into the trigger, the door stays open. When one of those players walks out of the trigger, the door stays open. And only if the other player walks out, does the door then close. And if one player was to walk into the trigger and then another player walks into the trigger and then one of those players leaves the game, the door remains open and then when the remaining player leaves the trigger, the door will then close. Awesome! So, hope you found this helpful. Feel free to leave a like on the video if you liked it, leave a comment down below if you got any questions, and feel free to check out some of my other tutorials that I have on the channel. But until next time, 